For the setup of the Swiss ball fly, you wanna choose a weight that allows you to slowly roll into position by walking yourself forward and then pulling the weights back like you just saw me do here and then lift your hips at the, at the end of that and then flex your glutes to keep a strong, stable position the entire time. The next part of stability is from your shoulders. You wanna make sure that your shoulders are driven into the Swiss ball. The more your shoulders are driven into the Swiss ball, the more stability you will have within the shoulder joint, which is the joint closest to the pecs, which are the muscles that you are working here. The next part is your head. Now you see how my head is slightly off of the ball? That is advanced. For most of you, you're gonna wanna make sure that your roll to position is where your head is on the ball because it's going to allow for you, especially if you have a weak neck, to rely on the ball for the stability of your neck versus relying on the muscles of the neck to hold that stability in place. For the positioning of my elbows, you can see that I have a soft bend in my elbows throughout this movement. You can also see in the movement that at the very top, my arms are completely straight. But what you can't see with the untrained eye is that I'm driving my elbows together, not my hands. What this does is it directly impacts the mind to muscle connection. But why? Two functions of the pec are gonna be adduction and also flexion of the humerus. So if that is fact, which it is, that means you are driving the arm across your midline in order for you to actually activate your pecs. So what can you do? Well, instead of just, you know, coming up as somebody would think in their mind, right because as a man thinketh so is he that is also true for movement when you drive your elbows together or when you are imagining that you are just taking your arms across your body from the bottom of the fly that is what is actually going to give you the very very best mind muscle connection with the pec because you are using its function to move and you're not just using it externally, you're also using it internally. As if you can really visualize this, you will 100% get a better feeling in your pecs. If you just merely move from point A to point B, I can almost guarantee you that you will not feel this movement in your pecs, which is why a lot of people say that they cannot feel their pectoral muscles in a dumbbell fly or in a dumbbell press. It is because they cannot visualize the function of the pectoralis major. And when you visualize these functions and then you externally do these functions, that is when you're going to get the best response from the working muscle itself. And again, to honor the tension of the working muscle, yes, we are going to drive the humerus across our body, but we are going to stop that driving across when the dumbbells are just slightly outside of the shoulder because the tension is where the Gravity is essentially constantly pulling the weights down. And that's why you cannot bring the weight on top of your shoulders, like literally where your wrists are stacked on top of your shoulders. And you also cannot bring the weight inside of that either. Because again, the gravitational force is only going to pull those weights down if those weights remain slightly outside of your shoulder. And you can absolutely test this. Go ahead and place the weights directly above your shoulders. You can stay there for a much longer time than if you have the weights slightly outside of your shoulders. Hopefully this helps. This is how you're going to get the most mind and muscle connection out of this movement point blank period.